Okay, Matt Jordan. Matt, can you take a few minutes and describe what you do with Skype? Sure thing, Jim. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Matt Jordan. I work in the Skype for Business uh, part of Skype, and we're a business unit that is dedicated to uh, helping businesses, any business, small, medium, and enterprise, adopt Skype. And that could be any number of uh, use cases as well. So that could be the Skype client that you are so aware of and, and use on a daily basis at the PC level. That could be adopting it on the mobile phone uh, where businesses are spending millions of dollars on their mobile phone costs. It also could be with our new Skype for Business offering with uh, Skype for SIP and uh, the Skype for Asterisks. Uh, so I talk to businesses and I help them adopt Skype and I'm also uh, responsible for helping along our partnerships with hardware and software manufacturers that enable the Skype adoption in a business. So, so the product line or offerings that are in the Skype for Business area, um, you mentioned Skype for SIP. Yes. What sir. else is there that's specifically business driven? Well, uh, so for the businesses that want to adopt Skype at the client level, at the PC level, we have a, a business client that allows a s administrator to have the controls and uh, reporting that you need within a business environment. So with the Windows client, you can actually uh, use an MSI installer, which is the Microsoft framework for installing the client push it out to 25,000 clients or, or PCs within your environment, no problem. Once you have it out there, the Skype for Business also has a GPO editor. And for folks in the IT space, they'll know this as the group, uh, group policy objects that are also within the Microsoft framework. And that allows you to push and pull levers within the Skype application to control the functionality and the usability of the client once it's been deployed. So for instance, if you are concerned with the uh, file transfer capability within Skype and you want to turn that off for a group of users within your organization, you can use this GPO editor to turn off that functionality just for that small subset or across your whole organization. And there's, there's plenty of different functions that we control within the GPO editor. Um, additionally, built into the Skype client, there is also the ability for a business to uh, program or to set a SOX5 or HTTPS proxy. Now Skype has historically been um, somewhat of a bane to the IT realm and people have you know been worried about how Skype impacts their network without being able to see uh, the impact of Skype. So by programming this SOX5 proxy within the client, all of your clients will then go to that box and it could be any number of these proxies, they're, they're standards-based uh, offering. And you can have all your traffic from your organization go through that box. And so you can have some quasi-tagging, you can see the network impact, you can see the bandwidth, the number of connections that Skype has. And you can also set firewall rules specific for that box, as opposed to uh, a firewall rule for your whole organization. So if you're concerned about security and you have a very locked down firewall, then by going through the SOX proxy, then you're gonna be able to offer the highest grade Skype experience and also a secure environment. So, so fundamentally, you've put controls in place so that the IT administrator in a company, whether it's a CIO, IT officer, or whatever, has the comfort level to feel they've got control of what's going on in the Skype activity within the company. Absolutely. And, and to add to that, uh, for the financial aspect, because, you know, as you know, uh, the majority of the Skype native uh, applications, voice, video, chat, file transfer, are all free. But if you decide to use our paid-for services like Skype for SIP uh, or Skype out, calling regular phone numbers or Skype in, uh, online numbers, from the outside world, there is a cost component. And we use the business control panel, which is a web-based portal uh, on skype.com forward slash business. You can log in there and you can manage all your spend within Skype. And, and uh, above and beyond your spend, you can also create now uh, the business user IDs. And so this is a ID that your business owns. 
you can reset the passwords, you can allocate credits, you can take back the credits. Uh, whereas in the past, you know, if uh, it was a consumer uh, Skype ID, then, uh, you know, you would give credits to this Skype ID and it, it was so said and done. Up to the user to spend them. Not exactly. You. And now you have not only uh, the ability to manage your spend, report on that spend, call detail reports. Um, you know, this is a, a great umbrella application that can be used in so many different realms from the desktop use to Skype for SIP, because this is where you provision and, and control Skype for SIP, but also Skype access. So if you have folks that are traveling, going overseas, using their laptops and using Skype access to access a, a paid for Wi-Fi spot, and they pay for it with their Skype credits, then you have this business control panel as a central tool to not only uh, enable that, but also report on it. And so this user may be using their PC, they may be using their lovely iPhone uh, for Skype. They may be using uh, Skype to pay for Wi-Fi access, and that's all within the business control panel that you can report on that. And so CEOs are really excited about that. So you pulled out the iPhone there. Are, yes, sir. Are you going to have iPhone applications that can do some of this business control panel functionality? Well, you can actually log in and uh, administer the uh, Skype business control panel using Safari on the iPhone. And I actually do that. Uh, for and it gets reformatted for the iPhone? Display. Well, it's just a, a browser-based uh, application and, and you just use Safari and away you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.